Hello everyone, we hope you're doing well and we're very happy that you're watching this video. In the fifth session of Microtik hardware videos, we'll be reviewing three of Microtik's cloud core routers, which are the CCR1009 Ethernet routers, namely the CCR1009 7G1C PC, 7G1C1S Plus PC, and 7G1C1S Plus, priced at $425 and $495. These three Ethernet routers are quite similar to each other when it comes to both looks and performance. To begin with, the letters CCR in these routers' product codes stand for Cloud Core Router. The third and fourth digits in the number that immediately follows indicate the number of the device's CPU cores. 7G shows that this device has 7 gigabit Ethernet ports, and 1C represents the Ethernet SFB combo port on this device and the letters PC point to the passive cooling enclosure of this Ethernet router. As for the product code of the two other devices, we only have the addition of the 1S Plus, which shows that they also come with a 10 gigabit SFB Plus port. In terms of appearance, the two devices with a passive cooling enclosure, that is the CCR1009 7G1 CPC, and 7G1C 1S Plus PC look fairly similar. They both come with a combo port, which is an SFB port together with an Ethernet port. They have 7 gigabit Ethernet ports, a serial console, and a type AB USB slot. The latter, however, also has a 10 gigabit SFB Plus port, as well as a SIM slot that is located just under the serial console port as well as a small LCD monitor. From behind, they again look quite similar, and they both come with a single power jack which will be connected to the power source using a detached power supply that is included in their box. This means there will be no heat created by the power supply that can affect the temperature of the router. Moreover, the router that comes with an SFB Plus port also has a micro SD memory card slot on the back. As for the 7G1C 1S Plus, it also comes with an SFB Plus port, an SFB Ethernet combo port, 7 gigabit Ethernet ports, a serial console, and a SIM slot, as well as an LCD monitor. It should be noted that in the combo port, the SFB port takes priority over the Ethernet port and in case both are connected at the same time, the SFB port will become active. Moreover, in an event of disconnect, as the combo port provides two physical interfaces, the Ethernet port gives us the hardware failover option. On the back, however, unlike the other two routers, this device has two power supplies that are placed inside its case and provide the power failover option. In addition, a micro SD card slot is also available on the back of this case. As for device specifications, the three routers are quite similar with some differences in between, and comparing them all together will give us a better overview. To begin with, the only device with an AC input range is the 7G1C1S Plus. Concerning the CPU, however, all three devices are almost identical with the exception of the 1.2 GHz CPU frequency of the 7G1C1S Plus. The 7G1C1S Plus is also the only one among these three without a DC jack input voltage. It has different dimensions than the other two devices and it comes with two cooling fans. In terms of power consumption, the three routers have different consumption ranges that is attributed to their processors, RAM sizes, and peripheral features. Moreover, as shown earlier, the two devices that have SFB Plus ports also come with micro SD memory card slots. The 7G1C 1S Plus has two AC inputs and only one DC input, whereas the other two have no AC input but two DC inputs. All three routers have a Type AB USB port, and they all have a passive PoE in which gives them the power failover option. The PoE in input voltage, though, is a little different on the 7G1C1S Plus compared to the other two. 
As mentioned before, two of the three routers have the characters 1S Plus in their product codes that indicates the existence of an SFB Plus port, both of which also come with mini SIM slots that can be used for smart authentication cards. And finally, though all three devices have the same local storage, the 7G1C1S Plus PC and the 7G1C1S Plus have a RAM size of 2GB. The block diagram of these three devices is also quite similar to each other, and unlike the previous routers that we have reviewed so far, the CCR1009 series have their Ethernet ports directly connected to their CPU instead of connecting to the CPU via a medium switch. This direct connection between the ports and the CPU can significantly increase device performance and throughput. And compared to the 7G1C PC, the other two routers have the addition of their SFB Plus ports in their block diagram as well. Also, as with all devices that have an SFB or SFB Plus port, it is recommended that you refer to the SFB compatibility table to check the functionality of different SFB modules with your device. In terms of test results, as always, you should be mindful of the package sizes, device modes, and network configurations, and also bear in mind that the throughputs given in this table refer to the performance of all active ports, and they are not the throughput of a single Ethernet port. Moreover, Based on similar criteria, that is packet sizes, device modes, and encryption configurations, you also have the IPsec test results of these routers and their encrypted traffic throughput, which indicates the hardware acceleration of all these three routers that enables traffic encryption over the network. As you can see, the throughput of these devices starts at around 8 gigabytes per second for the 7G1 CPC, and rises to about 16 gigabytes in the 7G1C 1S Plus. As a result of these different performance speeds, you should always ask yourself the most basic questions of network management, which deal with the type of usage you have in your mind for the network, the number of active users on the network, packet numbers and sizes, available ISP bandwidth, and the possibility of encrypting traffic. With regard to the industries that benefit from the CCR1009 routers, the education industry can benefit from these routers on networks with about 200 to 250 users. Managed IT service providers can use these devices for about 100 to 200 nodes, and event organizers can utilize these routers in case they have numerous network zones or they wish to conduct different simultaneous tasks with various packet sizes such as traffic monitoring, firewall, broadcasting, and so on. ISPs and WISPs can greatly benefit from the passive cooling feature of the CCR1009 routers as they can withstand warm temperatures and maintain their performance. VoIP service providers that have large traffics comprised of small packet sizes can also use these devices in their networks. Data centers can also use these routers, provided that they have a decentralized design and do not use these devices in a multitask mode. Given the passive cooling feature of the two CCR1009 routers, governmental organizations and manufacturers who might not be able to create well-conditioned environments can also put these devices to good use. The same goes for camping sites. Hotels, healthcare centers, and surveillance systems can also benefit from these routers, both for their passive cooling feature and power failover option that can maintain their connections and uptime. As for network management solutions, the hardware acceleration feature of these routers makes them suitable for establishing centralized VPNs, site-to-site -site VPNs, as well as large-scale hotspot internet and wireless controllers. Since they come with a memory card slot, these routers can have the necessary capacity for managing radius servers and conducting AAA tasks. Moreover, as they support the dude network monitoring utility, they can be useful devices for cache and content filtering as well as network monitoring. Moreover, based on their CPU performances, 
the CCR1009 routers are suitable for firewall and network security measures, and they are actually a few of the most suitable routers for dynamic routing protocols such as BGP and OSPF. Thank you everyone, we're very glad that you watched this video and hope you found it useful. We would love to hear from you, so leave us your comments and suggestions. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive all of our future content as soon as we roll them out. Until next time, stay safe out there and goodbye.